Hello, Kavich, and thank you very much for joining us today. I know you're very busy working on uh, your, your own films and also working with the, the anti-archive uh, collective in Phnom Penh. So it's a real pleasure to have you here for this conversation today. Um, before we start, I'd like to, to introduce you for our audiences here. Uh, so, th so for those who don't know, Kavich Niang is a filmmaker whose first two short films, A Scale Boy of 2011 and Where I Go of 2013, were both produced by the filmmaker Riti Pan, whose film we've seen earlier today. In 2015, Kavich directed two short films, Three Wheels, which was um, which premiered at the Busan International Film Festival, and Goodbye Phnom Penh, which was commissioned by the Asian Film Archive here in Singapore. Kavich's 2018 short film, New Land, Broken Road, premiered here in Singapore at the International Film Festival in 2018. Um, Kavich is an alumnus of the Busan Asian Film Academy. Um, he's also part of Talents Tokyo, Vision to Reel's Stops in Progress, and the Khan Cine Foundation's residency. And, this is very exciting. Kavich is currently completing, completing work on his first narrative feature film titled White Building, which I think we're gonna hear more about later today. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, actually something that's a little bit personal for, for both of us. Um, because I remember um, I was living in Phnom Penh at the time and I remember um, you and I um, and, and many other people watching the White Building being destroyed, the story that you're telling in this film. And I remember the overwhelming feeling of sadness and disappointment um, among so many people um, in Cambodia's creative communities. So many artists, musicians, dancers, so many people felt a great sense of loss when the white building was being displayed, destroyed. So I guess the first question I'd like to ask you is why was the white building so beloved for so many people? If you look at the, the Cambodian nowadays or maybe the I would say the Phnom Penh city, uh, there are not many uh, architecture that uh, was built during that time, like white building exists anymore. So I would say white building was one of the rare or uh, maybe unique building that still exists. For outsider was kind of uh, who know uh, or understand about the Khmer culture or Khmer architectures or knowing that I was quite, I think, painful that uh, this only the last thing, but at the same time, that building will be going to demolish, you know, which nowadays, I think you could not find any building like that, like a white building. So that's why I'm thinking that maybe for some creative people or some people who know about the, the history of the architecture of Phnom Penh, it was very uh, hard to accept that. But for me, as myself, living there in the white building, I think it's even more painful because um, I'm 34 years old. I'm living there for like all my whole life, you know, and the same as my parents, they live there, you know, like more than their life. So for me, uh, we live there and we witness, we witness so many things. We build friends, you know, we build, uh, you know, uh, memory on that building. So by losing the building, it was kind of losing half of your, uh, memory and that memory that 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 you have built for many years and I think it's hard that to say goodbye just for a moment you know so for me um, even nowadays I think people still remember that place and it was painful to go back and see uh, the place was empty and they start building a new uh, constructions you know that was I think for me it was uh, hard and to accept that yeah, no, thanks, Kavich. Now, as you say, the, the White Building was really a, an iconic example of, of uh, a kind of modern architecture, which is now often referred to as new Khmer architecture. But for you, since it was your home for, for your whole life, I think that the, the connection was very, very intimate, very personal. And I think that comes across in the film. Um, actually, one of my favourite kind of aspects of, of the way that you filmed, um, filmed this work is your attention to small details within the White Building. Um, I remember scenes of, of people's fingers trailing along those very textured walls, the very textured surfaces of the, of the walls in the white building. I remember the way you linger on um, the painted murals that decorated the homes um, of many people within the white building. So my next question is, can you talk a little bit about um, why you chose to pay so much attention to, um, to surfaces and to other small details within this very large architectural structure? Thank you. This very important questions, and um, I think this style or that decision is come from 
I think because uh, this documentary or this film was unplanted, uh, I never thought that I want to make uh, that documentary. But uh, during that time, I was at two, in 2016, I was, uh, I, I was writing my first narrative film called White Bidding by hoping to shoot uh, that film in the White Bidding itself. But slowly the plan was changed because uh, uh, the actual bidding was facing demolition before my, my shooting. So then uh, for me as people living there and as a, uh, a filmmaker who want to make the film in the bidding was kind of depressed, you know, stressed from that situation. So um, for me, I uh, was trying to, um, you know, talk to my team, you know, like producer, Daniel and Debbie. Uh, who know me well and who know the uh, the project? Uh, who uh, we discuss? Who I discuss? And we decide that maybe the best thing for that moment, I just uh, maybe borrow a friend of the camp, uh, borrow a friend for a camera, just to shoot everything as much as possible. So that's the idea, and hope think that maybe that could take might be used for my narrative thing, which I don't know that if I could have a chance to make this narrative film or not. So when we had that idea, I think the first day when I uh, started to shooting this documentary, uh, for me, it was kind of uh, emotional and pain to see that all your neighbors start to say goodbye and asking me, you know, where are you living? You know, what place, something like that. And at the same time, we end up talking about like uh, when they first time knowing each other and what they're going to miss, you know, after they leave it. So that's what we share during the interview. Uh, and then uh, I myself, uh, since this, the, the shooting, we don't have budget and no budget and at all, and only a small crew, me as a DOP, but also the, the filmmaker. So I was trying to capture uh, like people, you know, packing all that, but, uh, you know, you know, like try to follow as much as I, I, as much as I can. But at the end, at the end, I think I could not against the reality, which People move so fast and they don't have much time to talking to me. Um, you know, like uh, I could not film them as I wish, you know. So at the moment, I was kind of stressed that I don't know what kind of film I shoot, you know, I, and, and, and I really don't know, like I kind of lost, you know, at that moment. So, uh, and after that, and in one moment, I look at the footage, I said to myself that now I, I think that. I could not follow people anymore because they just move so fast. So what, what I what I do is that I need to trust myself and follow my instinct. What kind of thing I want to shoot, not just to shoot everything or everyone, you know. So slowly, uh, it's happened to me that uh, uh, when I see something, it's not about the people, but also like what I see in front of me. So I start to connect it to that kind of little thing, you know, small detail like a painting like something detailed that people left over after the packing. So for me, uh, it was kind of, uh, how do you say, it? the detail that remind me a lot of about my memory when I see those kind of thing. And at that point, I just follow that instinct by following that, you know, just uh, shooting, shooting, shooting. And then I never felt uh, enough to shoot more. I think if the building still exists, maybe I should go back and shoot again. Because uh, at the same time, I also felt that, um, maybe this is the last moment that I could, could capture that. So some food, uh, some detail, I, re I make the shot repetitive, you know, I should shoot again, shoot, shoot again, because maybe I know myself that if I don't shoot it now, it will be disappear. So for me, I just, just shoot as much as possible. And some shot that I uh, watch it in the editing, it's become repetitive, like corridor, like the wall, or uh, thing or like that, you know? But later, I think I discovered that, uh, this is somehow that my personal the tea link to that object you know it's not like uh, i was yeah it's, it's it's not it's the relationship between me and the object you know and when i work with my editor and uh, sound uh, designer uh, i was sharing them with the footage and with the sound with the magic of editing it can bring you the memory from that without seeing the actual image and from that thing, uh, we work together and try to shape that into that imagination. So for me, the film, I think is really about uh, what you see. It's not about what you see, but about how you felt about it. And from that moment, it will bring you to your own imagination and memory. The, the film is incredibly evocative. 
um, yeah, of, of, of the, the, the feeling, as you say, the feeling of the white building. Um, for this next question, I wanted to draw a little connection between um, your film um, and also Riti Pan's film that we've seen earlier today and the Southeast Asia gallery that, we're, um, that this screening is taking place in here. So while I'm talking, I'm going to share an image of a painting that's currently on display in UOB Southeast Asia Gallery 6 here. Talking about the White Building, which like the National Theatre next door, um, which uh, Riti Pan features in his film, um, these buildings were really uh, kind of iconic examples of new Khmer architecture, um, which was a, a style that, that flourished during the 1960s um, after Cambodia's independence from colonial rule. And this architectural style really sought to combine modern and international trends and technologies uh, with recognizably Cambodian or Khmer, and also perhaps more traditional uh, motifs and ideas. And so I think that a similar kind of attempt to combine or to be both modern and international while also connecting to older and more distinctively Khmer ways of life is also seen in this painting that we're looking at here uh, by Nyakdem. The painting was made around the same time as the white building was built. Um, and Nyakdem was Cambodia's best known uh, painter at the time. My question for you is now, working half a century later after the white building was made, half a century after Nyakdem was painting, my question is, to what extent is it important to you now for your films to be recognizably Cambodian or Khmer? And when you make your films, are you thinking um, primarily about audiences there in Cambodia, or are you thinking about audiences in Southeast Asia more broadly or, or elsewhere? Yeah, I, I, by, by seeing the, the painting that uh, you shared, yes, um, I think it uh, was contrast to, a big contrast I would say from that region because uh, what a painting was about like people living in the countryside, you know, and during that time, I imagine that Cambodia after we received, uh, got the independent from France, it was, beginning of, uh, I think, uh, influence from the modern and, uh, you know, I would say uh, foreigners, so idealistic, you know. I had an experience, uh, I think in a couple of years ago, I had an experience with, I, after watching David's film, Diamond Island, I was talking to my, uh, to uh, the edit, uh, to the actor in the film, Jinet. He told me that uh, for him, the diamond, it was like imagination for the, for the imagine of the future. But the reality is we are still in the present, which means that we are, we are not ready yet for the future. So maybe the future is too fast. So for us, maybe we could not follow that pace because when it's too fast, like our mind and heart is still, uh, still now, but the future is going too fast. So sometimes it's hard for us to adapt that. For example, that, uh, you know, the, the building, uh, being, the old building was being destroyed, but the new building was uh, under construction. But the question like who living there? Because at the end, uh, people who are uh, at that time was not be able to afford it, or maybe, uh, the home that they destroyed it was is part of their memory or something like that. So for me, when I'm making my own film, I honestly, I don't think much about the Asian, uh, about people who watch my film. I think it was dealing about myself and my own experience, no? And maybe from that moment, I think I, I, I yeah, I, from that moment, maybe it helped me to focus on myself more, you know, like by sharing my own experience and my personality to other people. And I think if I was thinking about making film for other people, I think the film might be made for different reason. Or maybe the final result would be different from the result that you've seen now. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that 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 personal um, kind of drive um, is is very evident in, in, in all of your films and, and also the white building um, as such a, an important part of your own personal story um, has also been important in a lot of your films. Um, one of my favorite of your short films, Three Wheels, is the story of a tuk-tuk taxi driver um, who lives in the white building. And I guess this is the question where I want to ask you to talk about 
what you're working on now, because I know that the White Building is um, continuing to inspire your work now, even though um, it, it's already been destroyed. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the, um, the narrative feature film that you're working on at the moment, which is also set in the White Building. What can you tell us about the film? I, I'm working on my own imagination because uh, my plan was uh, shooting on the White Building was, uh, the actual building was being demolished. I wrote this film based on my personality, but also now because of the situation to the white building, I need to adapt and to improvise that, you know. So uh, my, my final film is still called White Bidding. I think the story was uh, inspired from the actual building. That's what I have seen and experienced or living there. But because of the building, it's not exist anymore. So I was trying to combine my memories and the film set that I'm going to do is kind of blending together to be or maybe to feel that look like a white building. It's a story of a young teenager, um, some man uh, who was 20 years old, he's a break dancer, who has his two best friends, you know, traveling, traveling around the city, uh, uh, making performance, or making money from their performance. And one day, one of his best friends um, uh, telling him goodbye that he leave Cambodia. So the main character, some man was very, uh, I think, depressed that he losing his long friend, you know, that he grew up and living the same building together. Uh, but at the same time, he was facing that his own home and building facing demolitions. So his father, who is the, the chief of that building, trying to save the building, you know, like by gathering the voice to against that. But because of the the sickness of the father was so uh, getting worse and also the pressure from the government is too strong so the father could not stand for that you know that's the, the story in my fiction film we hope to uh, release the film by end of this year and uh, stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> okay. it sounds like an exciting story i look forward yeah. to seeing it with. Yeah. maybe this is a good point for us to end um, but again, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us here today, Kavic. It's, it's such a pity that you weren't able to travel, but it's a real pleasure to, to have you here in the theatre with us this way. Yeah. So thank you, and thank you for sharing your film with us as well. Thank you, Roger, and thank you, uh, Natalie and Pauline, for inviting me for this programme. And thank you for showing my film at your gallery. Thank you.